The WWE Intercontinental title has seen a return to prominence lately thanks to the historic title reign of Gunther over the last 540 plus days. But at no time has it held as much esteem as it did in the 1980s. The Intercontinental title was created in August 1979 when Pat Patterson defeated Ted DiBiase to win the WWF North American Heavyweight Championship. In order to make the title sound a little more worldly, the WWF told fans Patterson went on to win a fictitious tournament in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil for the made-up South American Heavyweight Championship, and both titles were combined to form the Intercontinental Championship. Patterson was officially crowned the WWF Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion on September 1, 1979. Having Patterson hold the title gave it immediate credibility. He would hold on to the IC title until April 21, 1980 when he lost it to Olympic strongman Ken Patera. Patera was one of the top heels in wrestling in 1980, simultaneously holding the NWA Missouri Heavyweight Championship at the same time as the Intercontinental Championship. He would defend the title for eight months until dropping it to former WWF World Heavyweight Champion Pedro Morales after an intense feud. During Morales' first reign, he had memorable feuds with Sergeant Slaughter, Stan Hansen, and Killer Khan. He even had a Kanto victory over a young Hulk Hogan. His reign would come to an end at the hands of newcomer Don Morocco in June 1981, and they would engage in a bloody feud throughout the remainder of 1981. Morales would manage to regain the title for Morocco on November 23rd of that year in a violent Texas death match. Morales' second reign would be the longest IC title reign to date, finally ending 14 months later at the hands of arch-nemesis Don Morocco. During this record-long reign, Morales gained victories over many opponents, but his main adversary was future IC champion Greg the Hammer Valentine. Morocco's second reign was memorable for a number of things. His insane promos with Captain Lou Albano, his blatant disrespect for his opponents, and his volatile feud with Jimmy Snuka. It was during this feud that Snuka famously performed a superfly splash from the top of a 15-foot high steel cage at Madison Square Garden in front of future legends Mick Foley, Tommy Dreamer, and Bubba Dudley. On February 11, 1984, Morocco finally lost the IC title to fan favorite Tito Santana. After defeating Morocco in subsequent rematches, Santana became embroiled in a lengthy feud with Greg Valentine who had just arrived in WWF from the NWA after having a historic dog collar match with Roddy Piper at Starcade 83. After many battles, Santana finally lost the title to Valentine on September 24, 1984, which allowed Santana time to heal some nagging injuries. Valentine defended the Intercontinental title at WrestleMania 1 against the Junkyard Dog, and shortly thereafter resumed his feud with Tito Santana. The intensity picked up where it left off with numerous brutal matches until Santana was finally able to regain the IC title on July 6, 1985 in a wild steel cage match. After the match, an incensed Valentine destroyed the Intercontinental title, which led to the creation of probably the most beloved version of the IC championship. Santana would continue defending the title throughout the remainder of 1985, but on February 8, 1986, he succumbed to the combination of a foreign object and a crooked referee and dropped the title to Macho Man Randy Savage. Savage had one of the most memorable intercontinental title reigns, engaging in feuds with Bruno San Martino, George the Animal Steel, and even challenging Hulk Hogan for the WWF Heavyweight Championship. But the most memorable feud of his reign was with Ricky Steamboat. Savage put Steamboat out of wrestling for two months in November 1986 by injuring his larynx on a Superstars of Wrestling broadcast. Steamboat's return from injury in January 1987 led to the build to their epic match at WrestleMania 3, where Steamboat ended the 13-month reign of Savage and captured the IC title in one of the greatest matches of all time in front of 93,000 fans in the Pontiac Silverdome. This cleared the way for Savage to become WWF World Champion the following year at WrestleMania 4. Unfortunately, Steamboat's intercontinental title reign did not live up to the title chase, as he had only one memorable defense on Saturday night's main event against Hercules Hernandez before shockingly losing the title to the Honky Tonk Man on June 2nd, 1987. The match was actually aired on the June 13th episode of Superstars of Wrestling. Although Honky Tonk Man was expected to be a short-lived champion, he actually went on to have the longest intercontinental title reign of all time at 454 days, 
just recently surpassed by Gunther, and had memorable feuds against Randy Savage and Brutus Beefcake. Honky's historic reign was finally ended in spectacular fashion by the Ultimate Warrior at SummerSlam 88, when Honky threw out an open challenge and Warrior answered the call, squashing the champion in 27 seconds. The Ultimate Warrior looked unstoppable until he met Rick Rude at WrestleMania 5 on April 2nd, 1989. Rude shocked the world when he pinned the Warrior with the help of manager Bobby Heenan and ended his title reign at 8 months. Rude's win was also significant as it finally gave Bobby Heenan a champion in his stable after 5 years of managing in the WWF. The Rude Warrior feud continued throughout the summer of 1989 until the Warrior managed to win back the Intercontinental title at SummerSlam 89. The Ultimate Warrior mostly feuded with Andre the Giant throughout his reign and would be the final man to hold the Intercontinental Championship in the 1980s, keeping it until April 1st, 1990 when he vacated the title after defeating Hulk Hogan for the WWF World Heavyweight title at WrestleMania 6. If you enjoy hearing about the history of the greatest championships of the 1980s, I'm sure you'll love this video on the NWA TV title. Click the link and check it out now.